When we think of the organs of the body, we tend to think of structures inside of us. But did you know that the largest, and probably one of the most vital organs of your body, is something you see every day? I am of course referring to your skin. In this KenHub tutorial, we will be looking closer at the skin and its histology. In this tutorial, we'll be covering an overview of the skin and its function, the different types of skin we have, the layers of skin, the cells that it's composed of, and the accessory structures which help it to carry out its functions. We'll also mention a clinical scenario where knowledge of the skin is important. Skin is amazing! It's the largest organ in the human body, covering us from head to toe and has several functions. It protects our squishy insides from trauma, infection and UV radiation, regulates our temperature and water content and keeps us waterproof in the rain, synthesizes the hormone vitamin D in daylight and lets us sense and interact with the world around us. Without skin, you would perish pretty quickly. It's therefore a vital organ. Not all skin is the same, however. It changes depending on the whereabouts it is in the body, adapting to the specific requirements of that area. Broadly, however, there are two types of skin. Thick skin and thin skin. First, let's look at the layers of skin. We'll use thick skin as our example and then explain the difference between thick and thin skin later on. There are three main layers of thick skin. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer, the dermis, which is the middle layer, and the hypodermis, which can also be called the subcutaneous tissue, is the deepest layer, directly overlying the fascia covering the muscles. These layers are subsequently divided into separate sublayers, which will cover us as we go through each in turn. We'll start with the outermost layer, the epidermis, first looking at its composition and then its five sublayers. This image is a magnified view of thick skin, with the epidermis highlighted in green. The epidermis is composed of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. But what does that mean? Let's break it down. Epithelium means that it's lining an organ or cavity. In this case, the skin is that organ. Squamous refers to the type of cells. Squamous cells have a stretched, flattened appearance. This makes them efficient at covering a large area. Stratified describes the arrangement of these cells. Stratified meaning that the cells are layered up. This image shows the stratified keratinocytes of the epidermis. Keratinized means that the top layers of cells contain keratin. That's where the name keratinocyte, that we just mentioned, comes from. Keratinization provides greater resilience to abrasion and makes the cells waterproof. However, this also means that water and nutrients can't get into the cells, so they subsequently die. This results in the need for a high production rate of skin cells. In fact, a skin cell's lifespan is around 10 to 30 days. The epidermis can be split into five distinct layers in thick skin and four in thin skin. This is based on the types of cell observed at these levels. A heads up before we list the layers, the term stratum is just Latin for layer. Going from superficial to deep, the layers are the stratum corneum, roughly indicated here, the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basale. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.